This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is can you check the refrigerant charge on a running air conditioning system without connecting to the refrigerant ports? So can this be done? It can be. Uh, you can just use temperature sensors, and remember that you're only measuring pressure on a system. So you're measuring pressure in order to convert to temperature. So if you want to try to avoid this, it is a little time consuming to find the right locations on the system to mount one of the two uh, temperature sensors. So the other temperature sensor can get mounted right out near the system ports. But let me just discuss why you would want to maybe avoid connecting to the pressure ports in the first place. And so the point is that refrigerant hoses may have old refrigerant oil inside from the prior system that you checked the refrigerant charge on. And so a lot of times technicians are just concerned that when they depress on that valve core at the, at the system right here, number one, maybe it won't receipt and maybe they'll have a, another problem where they have to replace the valve core or maybe the, the valve core may leak after they're done. The other thing is if they're using hoses, they have to do the air purging process. And during that process, there may be uh, some oil that may, old oil from old systems that may get into the system. And so that's what technicians are trying to avoid when they ask that question, can I check the refrigerant charge with temperature sensors only? So the whole point, you gotta remember that the whole point of checking the refrigerant charge with pressure is only to convert it to saturated temperature. So we're trying to find the temperature in the middle of the indoor coil for a system that has a fixed orifice in order to check superheat or total superheat. And we're trying to determine the temperature of the refrigerant in the middle of the condenser coil for subcooling for systems that have a thermostatic expansion valve. You can avoid the hose part by just using quick connect test gauges. And in this case, you have a high pressure gauge with a valve core depressing tool with a back seat. You could take your time connecting and disconnecting and you really won't lose much of any refrigerant. So you're only gonna have this much refrigerant that would end up getting taken out of the system if you were to use something like this. So anyway, let's get into where we would need to put the temperature sensors if we were to not connect in and measure the pressure. If you had a thermostatic expansion valve at the indoor coil, we can check the refrigerant charge with the subcooling method, which is the, the temperature of the refrigerant in the middle of the condenser coil. And then you have another temperature sensor right at the outlet of the liquid line service valve. And so subcooling is the temperature decrease of the liquid refrigerant as it passes through the condenser. And so we're gonna know that we can mount one temperature sensor on the liquid line right near the service valve. So one of the two is taken care of. We can mount that temperature sensor with electrical tape or instead of a bead type temp sensor, what you can use is just a clamp. The whole point is you wanna make sure that whatever temperature reading device you're using, it has calibration screws or a way to calibrate it to make sure that the temperature reading is accurate. Now, the other temperature sensor, that's gonna take a little bit of doing uh, in order to mount this. And so you have to mount this inside the condenser coil. So really, if you look down inside, like where the, uh, where the fan is mounted at, on the top of a condenser, you look down in there, you see the tube exiting the compressor going to basically a manifold tube. And then you have other smaller tubes going off of that and entering into that condenser coil. And so you have two manifolds. One is the manifold of the tubing that's entering the coil. Another manifold of tubing is exiting the coil and going to the liquid line service valve and over through the liquid line service valve and going to the indoor unit on the liquid line. So the object is to mount this temperature sensor in a location where it's in between where the, the tubing comes off of the manifold into the coil and where it comes off of the coil and re-enters into the exiting manifold. So there may be several pairs like that on a condenser coil, maybe two, might be five, might be four. And so you really wanna have this temperature sensor mounted and taped onto say a, a, a U tube in the middle between them. So to get to the inside of a unit, you may have to take the, the top fan off or you may have a panel on the side that you can get access into the inside of the condenser. And so that's really the only thing limiting us from just taking temperature measurements is the time it takes to mount and then disconnect this temperature sensor in order to get an accurate subcooling reading. And so that's it. That's why we're connecting and measuring pressure to convert it to saturated temperature. We just don't 
have a easy access to mount this temperature sensor on uh, the condenser coil in the middle of the saturated state. I wish there was from a manufacturer maybe where the tube kind of sticks out into a serviceable area where you could just mount the temperature sensor right there. So that's a thing. In order to check for a superheat, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need one reading inside the coil and another reading outside of the coil. And if you were to check total superheat, you would need one inside the coil and then and then the other one outside by the outdoor condensing unit. So first things first, you would turn the power off to the to the system. You'd remove the, the faceplate of the evaporator coil box in order to look at your A coil or your N coil or your slab coil. Then you'd identify the middle of the coil, meaning that if you see tubes entering and then tubes exiting, you would need to place your temperature sensor right in the middle between them. The other thing is you could just mount this temperature sensor right after where the tubing exits through the metering device and it enters into the coil. So the first uh, loop or two on the coil itself, after the tubing exits the metering device, that temperature of the refrigerant is not going to change. So you could just mount that temperature sensor there. Then you're going to go ahead and cover the evaporator cool box back up and then get your temperature sensor to come out, you know, and you'll have your temperature meter outside of the box. The other temp sensor will just be mounted on the suction line right outside of the evaporator coil box. And so you could tape these on or you could use clamps in order to say a clamp to mount this on the suction line outside of the coil. But this one is really going to have to be zip tied or taped onto the coil itself. So then you're going to be able to measure your superheat. Now that would be the case anytime that you have a fixed orifice metering device such as capillary tubing or a piston metering device at the indoor coil. And so what you really want to do is you want to measure total superheat because total superheat will give you an indication if there's any pressure loss or anything like that by the time it gets to the outdoor unit. So the refrigerant vapor entering into the refrigerant compressor actually is in the vapor state. So what could happen is that you may have so little of a superheat that it may change back into a saturated refrigerant before the vapor enters back into the compressor. And so you have to have vapor only. You can't have saturated refrigerant. You can't have liquid refrigerant entering into the compressor. Your first temperature measurement will be in the middle of the coil run. So the saturated state on the coil itself. The second temperature measurement, you're going to have to take it with another temperature sensor, which will be outside on the suction line right before the vapor line service valve. So there what you do is you take your temperature reading on the outdoor unit minus the temperature at the saturated state of the coil. So in order to get your total superheat measurement, your outdoor uh, suction line temperature is going to be higher than your saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil. And so you're going to be able to find your total superheat. Now you're going to have to still compare that against what your target superheat is. That is a moving number. If you want to learn more about the total superheat method and also the subcooling method, I've got full articles that are free right over on the website at acservicetech.com. So the whole point is that it's a little bit labor intensive in order to just measure the temperatures by itself because the manufacturers have not uh, made that as an easy checkpoint. Like for instance, having the tubing exit out of the evaporator coil box at the saturated state, like you'd be able to just take a temperature measurement right on that easy And we would never have to touch the ports if, say, a manufacturer was to add some extra length of tubing outside of the box. And, of course, you'd have maybe like a little plastic cover or something like that on it for technicians to take their temperature measurements on. So the only reason we're measuring pressure at the ports is because it's faster. But really, we don't care about pressure as much as temperature. And if you want to learn more about refrigerant charging, make sure to check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. So we have this book available over at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. We have the ebook available over on Google Play and the Apple Bookstore. But we also have a thousand question workbook with the self-study guide. So you can check that out and then uh, do that at your own pace and see if you have the correct answers. We also have refrigerant charging cards. So these are quick reference cards in order to troubleshoot or check the charge. They've got PT charts, refrigerant weight charts, and things like that on them. We've got a troubleshooting guide. These are made out of polystyrene, so they'll work real well out in the field. And so heat and refrigerant oil aren't going to affect these, so they'll last a long time. So make sure to check out our resources over at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.